Andrew Shore on location in Chicago at the 2010 meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. There are more than 30,000 cancer doctors and researchers gathered here from around the world. And part of the buzz is about immunotherapy. What does it mean? We posed that question to Dr. Lynn Schuchter. She's chief of hematology oncology at Penn's Abramson Cancer Center. Dr. Schuchter, you were the moderator of a panel here at ASCO where you were discussing novel therapies. Tell us what that means here at ASCO this year and what it really could mean for patients with serious conditions. This is actually a, a tremendous year for advancement of cancer, and in particular melanoma is one example. Melanoma is the most serious form of skin cancer, and one of the papers that were, was presented at the plenary session, so that's one of the top papers that were presented at this year's ASCO, um, was a therapy called ipilimumab, and this was a clinical trial. Um, Dr. O'Day was the uh, lead investigator, um, and this clinical trial uh, treated patients with stage 4 melanoma, and patients received the ipilimumab um, and compared it to a vaccine for melanoma. And this particular clinical trial showed that ipilimumab, which is a treatment that revs up the immune system, was effective in patients with advanced melanoma. And this is really the first study that has shown um, an improvement in survival for patients with advanced disease. So this was a study of immunotherapy, a, a, a a treatment that we think is going to be very useful in melanoma. It's a new immunotherapy called ipilimumab, um, and it's just one step in the new direction to find new therapies for patients with advanced melanoma. Dr. Schuchter, tell us more about what's going on at Penn's Abramson Cancer Center when it comes to research in immunotherapy that could really be a benefit to patients. Immunotherapy is an approach to treat cancer in which the patient's own immune system is stimulated um, to attack the cancer cells. So cancer can look different than normal cells, and so the idea is that we could harness the power of the immune system to recognize cancer cells as foreign and eliminate them. You know, people are familiar with using vaccines to tackle infectious diseases, measles and mumps. Um, they're revving up the immune system to eliminate a bacteria or a virus is highly effective. We're just beginning to try to look at immunotherapy to treat cancers. Um, and so in this particular treatment, there's two things actually that happen in the immune system. The immune system can be stimulated, but our body also has a natural break to inhibit an immune response. This specific form of immunotherapy, the ipilimumab, actually takes the break off. And so it is a way of further stimulating an immune response. And so we're very hopeful that these results are going to lead to an FDA-approved therapy. So this is going to be a new approach for patients. Um, it's a therapy that has actually very few side effects. And the hope is that it will be effective for patients with advanced disease. But what we like to do is take this into earlier stages of disease. And so treat uh, patients who are going to be at risk for recurrence with this approach. What you're seeing is really the fruits of of, um, lots of intensive basic science research, and I think that's true of immunotherapy and some of the new targeted therapies. So we really understand in a different way what part of the immune system do we need to trigger to get an effective immune response. And so immunotherapy is actually a very broad category that includes vaccines, um, cytokine therapy like interleukin-2. So the category is very broad, and this, is, this new medicine, ipilimumab, is a new approach. Um, and so we're understanding maybe better which patients to treat, but also really understanding the science behind it, and that is really the key to delivering more effective therapies. Enrollment on a clinical trial is really often your very best option. And many patients have this idea that enrolling on a clinical trial means that they're going to get a placebo or no treatment. Really a clinical trial means that you're getting often um, the most cutting-edge, state-of-the-art treatment. It's giving you access access to some of the newer therapies. So um, for many of these diseases, you know, if we give traditional chemotherapy, you know, we see maybe some shrinkage of the tumor, but we don't see improvements in survival. So I would say that a clinical trial really is the um, first, second, and third approach that most patients should consider. 
Um, and I think it's really important that you know we continue this dialogue with insurance companies um, that they pay for the routine care cost associated with clinical trials. Most of the time, the investigative part of this is provided by the sponsor. Um, but this is really vital, and we are calling for a doubling of the funding for the clinical trials enterprise in this country. The only way that we make advances in the care of patients with cancer is to enroll patients on clinical trials, try these new therapies. That's how we've made advances. That is the only path to improving survival of patients with cancer is to participate in clinical trials. But that infrastructure has to be funded, and so that's another important initiative that ASCO um, is really on the forefront of and I think is going to make important headways for all of us in the oncology community. What would you consider are really the most important treatment areas in cancer as we look maybe at a five-year window? I think, and as, as, as being exemplified at, at this year's ASCO, is really this concept of personalized therapy. It's also known as targeted therapy. And so this idea is that we understand the molecular or genetic abnormalities in an individual patient's cancer, and then we target that broken gene with the most effective therapy. And so personalized in this case means matching the right drug to that patient's genetic abnormality. So being presented at the plenary session um, is an ALK inhibitor. That's a gene that can be abnormal in a small subset of patients with lung cancer. And this new ALK inhibitor looks incredibly promising for patients with lung cancer. Um, at Penn, this is really the focus of our research. A young woman that I treat was having significant pain related to her melanoma. Um, was actually not able to work, and she's on a pill with one of these BRF inhibitors. Um, this particular trial is sponsored by um, Roche, but this BRF inhibitor has, she's off pain medication, she has a new job, she has minimal side effects associated with the treatment. So this is what the future really is, is understanding the genetic abnormalities in cancer, combining that with the right target for that patient. And I think the other big approach is gonna be combining these agents. So we've talked about immunotherapy today, but there's a lot of interest in combining immunotherapy with targeted agents, and I think that's gonna be very fruitful. And again, I would say that at Penn and at the Abramson Cancer Center, that is a big focus of our, our work is combining um, these targeted agents with immunotherapy. All this, of course, is promising news for patients. In Chicago, I'm Andrew Shore.